Maintenance isn't just physical work these days. Firmware needs your attention too, and today we're getting into it with Dante Controller. These videos are made possible by viewers like you through Patreon. Like and subscribe here if you want to see more of this type of video, and visit dcsoundup.com forward slash shop for all the latest stickers and more. Along the lines of taking care of batteries and performing routine maintenance, firmware is a super important topic these days, especially as you may have had your hardware packed away or sitting on a shelf for many months now. All while your control devices, your iPads, your computers, and everything else have been receiving the latest operating system, refreshes, and updates. Before you need your gear again though, you'll want to go through all of your firmware and software to make sure things are as compatible as you remember them being. Uh, it's usually easier to update the gear incrementally in a controlled environment in the shop rather than when you find out it's not working on the job site. So really good opportunity to dig into that kind of stuff right now. Now, I've been a little bit surprised in the past when talking with different folks about questions they've messaged about with their Dante configurations that are giving them trouble. One of the first things you obviously want to check and one of the first things I ask is if they're on the latest firmware for all their devices and what version of controller software. And it's surprising to learn how many folks don't have a great relationship with updating the firmware specifically in their Dante devices. I've heard from people carrying Avio adapters in their Pelican cases on jobs that they've never updated them since buying them new and didn't know it was something that they needed to be thinking about before putting them into service on a gig. Now you can download the firmware directly from Audinate's site and update manually using the update manager and recovery tool, but in controller we're already getting notifications telling us what to do. So we have a few Avio adapters on a small network here and with controller open, we can go and take a look at a two channel input adapter that hasn't been updated in quite a while. Just navigate to where you see the update notification button and select it. And then you can select the device you wanna update from the list of eligible devices and then simply hit update. That's all there is to it. Uh, assuming you don't lose power during the update or have some sort of network failure. If that does happen, there is a recovery mode procedure that is detailed in a factory guide that I'll link down below that confuses some folks. So definitely check that out if you have an issue with that. The unit will then reboot and continue with the same patching and configuration that it had before. Typically, it is always a good idea to save a configuration file before doing any major updates, any uh, major reconfigurations, just in case you get into a situation where things aren't working uh, and you can't figure it out. You can reload your known good state. So controller makes it really easy to see and update all of your devices. Although more devices are starting to come now with their own control software, like the Neutrik D Pro interface and the Hair M8RX that we looked at before. It would be really great to see some effort in the future for a common control platform like controller is for patching. Uh, for the control side too, there's some pretty standard things that are going on in these individual apps. Uh, there is uh, high pass filter, phantom power, gain control, Again, some device ID and a couple of other features uh, from each manufacturer that could be integrated. I, I would like to see it integrated into controller because having only looked at a few of these different devices now from different manufacturers, keeping all of their individual software on a machine and ready to use just to make a simple gain or high pass filter adjustment is going to get cumbersome and it's going to uh, definitely turn people off from the concept of this unified uh, network of devices that you can control from one piece of control software. So it would be really cool to see that integrated in the future and uh, get away, even if it's just an addition to, but it'd be nice to get away from those uh, individual software packages that are required right now with some of these devices. So like most Dante issues, uh, updating firmware is as simple as that until it isn't. Uh, so really make sure that you don't lose power or have any major network issues that you cause during those updates they go pretty quick so it should be fine get ahead of those issues now though and do this while you have downtime while you're in a controlled uh, location like at home or in a shop and not when you get back out on the job it's never fun to do firmware updates that are critical uh, on the job site it it does happen but if you can avoid it and test through things before you leave the shop all the better 
it might be a really good time right now as well with the downtime to obviously look through all your other firmware and software and compatibilities, but maybe start to come up with a game plan for the gear that you are sitting on currently, what it's being used for, what its value is to the work you're doing at the moment, and what you realistically look to be doing in the next 6, 12, 18 months. Like Apple products, they're coming out with their own chipset, uh, own processors soon, so everybody's going to be thinking about the Apple products in their inventory compatibility with hardware, whether you want to hold on to that stuff if you have an upgrade planned uh, for any product in the next couple of years. It's a good break right now to look at all that stuff, see what you're not using, maybe sell some stuff off before the value starts to drop, and have some cash on hand so when you are ready to do the next thing, when you've got uh, an idea of what you need going forward a little bit clearer, you'll have some cash on hand to spend. That's all for now. How often do you update your Dante firmware? Is it something you're doing on a schedule or just as the notifications pop up in controller? I'd love to hear what your uh, experience has been with that and how you go about it uh, either individually or at your company. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe and visit dcsoundup.com. It really does help. Uh, you can find DC Soundup on Patreon and Instagram as well. I'll see you next time.